there was this moment in the middle of her living room where she like looked at me and she was like, is it possible? Like, is, is this possible? Can I have peace? Can I have joy? Can I sit in my living room and just enjoy a cup of tea because I'm truly at peace? And I just, it's going to make me tear up now because yeah. it's like, yes, it is. It's so possible. Woo! What's up and welcome to the Speak Organize podcast. I'm your host, Melanie Summers, professional organizer, ADHD organizing specialist, and your go-to gal for all things pro-organizing business. I like to speak organize to give you the tools to conquer your clutter, live life with more purpose, and learn all about the business. Do me a favor, if you haven't already, take out your device and tap that subscribe button so that you become a member of the speaker fam. I would love to have you on board. As you get value out of today's episode and you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and tap that thumbs up and the little notification bell so that you're notified whenever we post new content every single week. And if you're an Apple podcast user, you can leave us a rave five-star review, which will help the channel grow to reach more amazing folks just like you learning all things tidying business. If you're jonesing for some of that genuine connection, you have tons of questions that need to be answered, then you got to join my free Facebook group. It's a thriving community full of amazing folks ready and willing to answer any and all questions. And I'm in there every single week hanging out. We would love to have you as a member there. That information to join will be down in the description and the podcast show notes. The main mission here at I Speak Organized is to give you the best quality tools and resources to level up your business and have a truly successful six or seven figure business that doesn't suck away all of your time. So if you're brand new to all of this, and it seems very overwhelming, you don't really know where to start, you have come to the right place. I am your go-to gal for all things pro-organizing business. If you're afraid that you aren't enough, like you don't have enough experience or you don't really have the goods to bring to the table to charge what other people charge or whatever story you happen to be telling yourself, I am here to help you understand that you can be exceptional with the right tools and training. So in just a few minutes, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit more about how I can help you with that. But in the meantime, let's get into this juicy interview. All right, speaker fam, please join me in welcoming a fellow Pacific Northwesterner. This is Lisa Fosnot, and she is the owner and founder of The Productive Owl Home Organizing Company. Welcome. Hello, thank you for having me. Thanks for coming. This is great. I love coordinating with other West Coasters because the time change is not a factor. So that's really nice. <laughs> Thanks for doing that. <laughs> I want to dive right in and learn a little bit more about your business. You and I have similar philosophies to our organizing styles and things that we really sort of focus on with our clients. So I love to nerd out about all this and I'm very yeah. excited to chat more. So can you just tell us a little bit more about the Productive Owl and what inspired you to start your business? Totally. So the Productive Owl is an organizing business. We focus on specializing with neurodivergent families and busy professionals. We help them create functional clutter-free spaces. What inspired me to start my business and to grow that is the firsthand experience that I had from the overwhelming disorganization that I grew up with. It was hard. It was super challenging growing up. And I know that that is one factor. And then I also know that being neurospicy is another factor. So having those struggles that I have have driven me to develop strategies that work for people like me. There are systems that are intuitive and they're flexible and they're sustainable. Yeah, very important. And so just kind of diving in a little bit more to your personal journey, whatever you're comfortable sharing, obviously, because I know you and I both and several organizers in the industry encounter a lot of folks who come from families with hoarders or chronic disorganization. And can you tell us a little bit more about what that was like for you growing up and how you sort of used organizing as a way to create safety and function and just routines and all those different types of things? What did that look like? Yeah, like clutter was the norm for me growing up. I didn't know any different from that outside of when I started going to my friends' houses. Mm. And I was like, this is great. Because at home, I felt overwhelmed. At, at home, I felt anxious. I couldn't have friends over. And I know that I was starting to develop my own systems. And so all of these things that I started to do started to create something that was of order. And I realized that my personal journey is something that needs to have order. Like I 
thrive in that. I thought that I thrived in chaos, but that's not the truth. Mm -hmm. But my parents, like their struggle with it has truly given me the empathy that I need to, to work with other people. It's also helped me to open up and to approach each client with like an understanding of it. I, I get where you're coming from, but I have also totally come through it. And I live this life that is so much more appealing. And I know that it's possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. well said. Yeah, I can relate to a lot of that. My parents didn't have chronic disorganization struggles, but I, and we're going to get into this in a second, because you and I share that neuro spiciness. I love that term. I'm also, I have ADHD. And so yeah. being organized for me growing up was very difficult. And especially with executive function, I was the kid that was always up until two or three o'clock in the morning, cramming for a test or trying to get my homework done because time management was just not a thing. And I, so I had to work yeah. so much harder growing up to try and succeed with the rest of my peers. And so, and it was yeah. a struggle. So I want to hear what the impact of having ADHD is like for you and for your clients, and maybe just kind of tap into just introduce us to some of the methods and strategies for maintaining your organized life. Yeah, for sure. Living with ADHD, it's as you know, it's challenging, but it's also my gift. And I understand what it's like to be overwhelmed by tasks. I understand that we forget things easily. I understand understand that we lose focus quickly, but I use those as my like superhuman power and I hyper focus on other people's clutter. So that's how I like use my ADHD to really work well. But I also have figured out that if we can have simple visual and like easy to maintain strategies, like that's how it's possible for ADHD neuro spicy humans. For example, like <clears throat> a couple of my clients use their cabinets there they use a bookshelf rather for their clothing like they fold all their shirts and they have it displayed they can easily see what they have and that works for them and some people would say that that's not how you're supposed to do things right and i say no that you can do whatever works for you and we don't need to fit into these little boxes that we already don't fit into anyways mm -hmm. I emphasize the importance of routines, but my biggest thing that I emphasize is the less that you have, the less you have to manage. <sighs> like right. light bulb moment, but it's it's really so, so simple. And once we can understand that concept, we can start thinking logically and we can use our ADHD to that advantage. Absolutely. That's so well said. And I, I resonate with a lot of that as well, going into clients' homes that struggle with maintaining order decluttering is rule number one and we rip closet doors off totally. and set up similar systems where it's kind of just like can you chuck it at the right bin does it have a big bold visual is it going to sure. be something you can maintain and clean up in two minutes or less if it's not it does not pass the test right that yeah yeah Don't make it harder than it really needs to be like we have enough challenges. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, just as humans in general, not to mention having to fight, you know, maintaining focus or re refocusing every, you know, six seconds on average. It's just exhausting. Absolutely. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. So let's talk a little bit about the services provided because obviously working with neurodivergent clients, the way that you organize is vastly different. You touched on that a little bit. So let's talk a bit more about what that looks like in case you know, because there's a lot of people listening and watching who are other professional organizers or they're just getting into the industry. You will be working with clients. You're going to get somebody on the phone that says they have ADHD. They were diagnosed late in life or whatever it happens to be. Yeah. And those are the folks who really do struggle with chronic disorganization. And those are the people that end up calling organizers more often than not. So you need to know how to cater to that demographic. So mm -hmm. what do you suggest? What's, what strategies and services do you find yourself providing most often? My biggest service that I provide is decluttering. I mean, like you, like you said, I mean, and I think that that's one of the things, the biggest things that I've realized, I would call myself an ex hoarder. I hoarded things for weird reasons. And because of that, I know that, like I said, having less is the way to do it. And so decluttering and making sure that we're getting down to just what we need and actually use is so, so, so vital. But working with ADHD humans is all about adapt. It's all about being flexible. It's all about making things functional. Like it has to be logical. They want to think things through. I don't want to put something there because you told me to put it there. I need to know why are we putting this here? 
oh, well, it's because it's a kitchen item and it goes next to, oh, these like items. Logical. Got mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. So focusing on the organizational systems that are like both practical and sustainable mm-hmm. is also key to mm-hmm. helping neurodivergent humans. And I think the biggest thing is just being non-judgment, non-judgmental mm-hmm. within that flexibility. If they you are going through one thing and they're diverted into another direction, follow them. Yeah. Don't try to bring them back because that's not going to work. We, our brain is over there now. And so we've got to work in that system. We've got to, maybe we're bouncing all over the place. Mm-hmm. So that that's why I work well with ADHD humans because I'll just bounce with you. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, sometimes it's nice to be able to work in little chunks on different projects throughout your totally. day. It actually is more satisfying to do that than to try to sit and make yourself finish from like go from start to finish on something. Totally. But if you can just like make a little progress here, move on to the next thing, you're kind of dabbling. It's like, you know, a charcuterie board of of decluttering. (laughs) I love that. And they can charcuterie while I can maintain that focus too. Yes. You know what I mean? Like if they're like, I'm bored with this, I get it. You start focusing on this bin. Why don't you find all of the whatever? And I just keep going. So there's like an, there's a way that we can still bounce and still keep order and still keep going in the direction that we need to go. Right. Yeah. You nailed it because that is the way to balance flexibility and logical systems or logical. That's amazing. I love that you pointed that out. So a couple of things I want to touch on. I asked this question to all of my guests and I love hearing the personal stories. It really kind of all ties it together. So if you can think of a client or a friend, or even a moment in your own life where you really felt that you were making a difference, you had a moment of success where you were like, Oh, this is why I do what I do people. Uh, What is that moment for you? You know, just a couple of weeks ago, a gal called me and like, she, I, I do events all over town. I'm all over the place. I want people to know about me. Right. But I did this event and she earned a free consultation and it took her like five months to like claim that just back and forth, continue to follow up all the good things. And I get over to her house and I realized why it took her a while. She's ashamed. Like she's just, she's a single woman. She feels like she should have it under control. She's a, she's a busy professional. She's got her profession under control. Like why can't she get her home in order? Why is she continue to over consume? Mm -hmm. Why does she have this like spending problem? And like, where exactly is the spending problem? Because she doesn't feel like it's major Mm-hmm. And it, there was this moment in the middle of her living room where she like looked at me and she was like, is it possible? Like, it, is, is this possible? Can I have peace? Can I have joy? Can I sit in my living room and just enjoy a cup of tea because I'm truly at peace? Mm. And I just, it's going to make me tear up now because yeah. it's like, yes, it is. It's so possible. Like, yeah. People wait so many years because they think it's not possible. They think they've, they're too far gone. They mm-hmm. think that they're so messed up. They think that their ADHD or their neurodivergence is so out of this world. And it's like, yeah. <sighs> I'm with you on this one. It's so possible. You're, you're making me yeah. tear up too. Cause I get, <laughs> I get it. It's, it is so hard. The amount of times I'm sure that you have, I have anybody else listening that we've sat and cried with our clients and there's oh. been hugs and tears. Cause it is, it's emotional. Oh, it's easily. Yeah. And you just, it's, and you come from this place of overwhelm and that's when you call the organizer. Right. And so we feel all that we feel all of it. And yeah. it's, and for you and I, who have been in that place and overcome those struggles, yeah. you know, it that much more intimately. And it, it is a more emotionally charged moment for us as well, because we really, truly do understand where you're coming from. We aren't the, not necessarily the people that, you know, love to have us over because, you know, you would always organize your friend's closet and this and that, like I didn't no. grow up that way either. So no. I'm not naturally organized. I I love it now. And I like hyper focus, hyper focus and like nerd out to the extreme. Mm -hmm. I never thought that would be me. Right, right. But it's life changing. It's life changing. Yeah, huge. Yeah, I love your only way. 
It is. <laughs> oh, gosh, I just love the enthusiasm and the passion that you bring to it. And I'm so glad that you're a part of the industry because that's what we need, sister. Yes. That is yes. what we need. So speaking of challenges, you know, you, your client turns to you in that moment. She's feeling really defeated. I'm sure a lot of clients have those same struggles. So what are some of the biggest challenges that you feel like your clients face? Just to kind of help us out, because, you know, these are things that we're going to encounter. We need to know how to help them overcome those obstacles. Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest thing is getting rid of stuff and having that emotional attachment to things, not only to the things, but like to the process of buying it. Like, oh, I bought this in Europe or but I don't like it and I'm not going to hang it. And, or, you know what I mean? Like there's all these like processes that we have to go through. And a lot of people don't want to, there's that decision fatigue. There's that like paralysis that comes on. And then you start thinking about money and you start thinking about who you are, who you were when you bought it and the intentions on why you bought it. And like going through that whole process and then like coming down to the fact that I'm paying someone to take away the things that I literally overbought. Mm-hmm. Ouch. Like, that's, that's a sting. That's a stinger. It is. I get it. (laughs) It is so hard. You're like, I already spent money on this and now I'm spending it again and I'm not even going to have the thing. Yeah. That is hard. And I get it. I I totally get it. So the question really isn't, you know, like, do you love it? Do you need it? Is it something you use? Yes, those are all valid. But like the biggest question is, could you live without it? Like, I get that we have all these things. These are so great. We bought them with such good intentions. But could we? Could you maybe choose a different water bottle? Mm -hmm. Because you don't have nine to choose from. You only have four. You know, things like that. Like, I get it that those are super challenging, but giving them that like guide to process and like identify what truly adds value to their lives that I think that's the true component of of fighting through those challenges. Right. Curation. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, That's my new word for the year is, is helping clients to curate things. And and that really kind of puts it into perspective for me as I'm trying to help them through that moment. That's great. So now let's talk just briefly, because I'm, I'm sure every client is very different maintenance strategies. What is your Mm -hmm. like top go-to strategy for helping clients maintain order aside from decluttering is is there one sort of thing that you feel like neurodivergent clients really kind of like can hold on to for a long period of time what would that be sure it's the biggest one and people are going to scream at me when they hear it because they're like oh i hear it all the time (laughs) yeah don't put it down put it away (laughs) even and even if a way is a pile, a stack, it just don't put it down carelessly. We've got to start being intentional. Mm-hmm. Big, huge. Love that. Super simple too. Yeah. And that's, yeah, that there's really nothing else to be said about that. Mic drop. Love it. Um, <laughs> so now in terms of your business, because we yeah. do like to talk a little bit about the business of tidying here on the Speak Organized podcast. Love you know- it. You've helped hundreds of clients declutter and minimize their belongings. What strategies have been key for you in sustaining and scaling your business successfully? My number one, I guess, way of scaling my business is just being authentic. Mm -hmm. Like being true to who I am and not changing that. My brand color is black. Like I I get it. That's not normal for, especially for professional organizers. And I've got this side shape Yeah. and I am going to keep it and I'm going to own it. And, you know, I occasionally throw a few F-bombs and, you know, we shit shift over here Uh and that, but that's who I am. And I attract the most amazing clients because of it, because I'm true to myself. I don't have time for everybody. I only have time for my people. And I want to attract my people who are accepting, authentic, ready. They're non-judgmental just as well as I am, right? Right. So like the biggest one being true and authentic to myself. And then that second one is like networking, Mm. getting out there, like events, events, events. I'm always out. I'm always, I'm in every networking group. And I say the same thing every time. Hi, my name is Lisa. I'm from The Productive Owl. And I am a home organizer that helps people, helps neurodivergent families and busy professionals minimize and declutter and find systems that work for them. Mm -hmm. Same thing every time, right? That's people start remembering that. Right. Yeah. And that's part of your branding is being able to deliver that and that authenticity and a big concern that people have 
I mean, and I get it all the time talking to coaching clients is I feel like the market's oversaturated. What do I do? How do I stand out? You just be yourself because your clients are not necessarily going to be wanting to come to me and vice versa. We all totally. have people. You're right. That's yeah. a huge, huge key piece of this is just remembering that there's a lot of people out there that need so help. Many. Everybody's different. Yeah. We can't and everybody everyone. is different. Yeah. We can't all be. And then, people. yeah. And like the best part of networking is even with other organizers mm-hmm. is figuring out other different, like different styles. Yes. I, I, I am a little bit much for some people. I'm fast. I am go, go, go. I'm going to get it done. You hired me to get it done. I'm going to get it done. We're going to have results. We're going to have an end. You know what I mean? Like that's not everybody. Everybody does it differently. Some people are slower knowing who does what and then being able to refer Mm -hmm. and being able to say, I got the person for you. I know who can help you with that. Right. Right. It is. Yeah. Having that network has been, has been really key for us as well, because you know, there are certain clients that we don't help specifically hoarders. We don't do hoarding, yeah. like high level hoarding jobs. We're not equipped right. for it. Same. I have a great gal totally. that I, and I refer her to clients all the time. And it is such a godsend because I know that this person who is really awesome, that is just not my person will get right. the help they need and deserve. Right. Exactly. Yeah. The ultimate goal is to help everybody. Because right. everybody could use an organizer. Are you serious? Right, right. It's so true. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you, so um, I'm going to skip ahead just a little bit here because I feel like we've really touched on a lot of these different things. You're obviously very authentic and non-judgmental. You help people overcome their feelings of embarrassment and shame. Your your story really showcases that. But there's also it we go a little bit deeper than that too because it is a very like soulful healing thing. A, a kind of like a gift that we give to our clients. So you mentioned that on your website and as part of your philosophy, can you elaborate on how organizing physical spaces can help heal emotional and mental spaces? Yeah. Like, so I feel that organizing is more than just tidying up, right? Like it's that creating a space that reflects and supports your inner self. Mm -hmm. When we clear out the clutter, we're clearing out a lot of that emotional baggage. We're hanging on to things for a multitude of reasons and letting that physically letting that go starts that process of letting go internally. Mm -hmm. The process of letting go things go is like that no longer serve you can be freeing, but it can also leave room for new possibilities. Right. So for me, I know that I wouldn't be who I am today without an organized and tidy home, Mm -hmm. which seems baffling. But I also know that the person who I was when my house was totally chaotic, was on the path, the road to non-existence. Mm -hmm. I I wouldn't have made it if that was where I kept going. Mm -hmm. And I know from my own personal journey that just getting rid of all of the clutter, just getting rid of all the crap that speaks so loudly Mm -hmm. can be so calming and can give you so much time. I had no idea how much time I was looking for this. Right. Right. Yeah. I, so when we do our booths at different street fairs and and, and various community events, we do trivia questions. And that's one of our trivia questions is how many days on average do people spend per year looking for stuff they've lost? Yeah. And it's, I think it's like 2.5 days for the average person for somebody who has ADHD or some other form of neurodivergence. I feel like it it like quadruples, like you're spending like an entire work week of your life every single year looking for stuff that you've lost. And it's just crazy to think that that's, you yeah, know, because your brain's part. like, I know I bought that. I know it's here. I bought, I remember coming up the stairs with it in the bag, you know, all the things and then you can't find it. Oh, it's so frustrating. Oh yes. <laughs> I, I hate it. I know. And I still do that in a relatively organized space. Most of the time. Yeah. I can super, it still really happens. It, you know, we're not perfect. No, Absolutely. we're not. And that's why we're here to, to help our clients through that. Okay, pop quiz time. How would you feel six months from now if you were sitting in this exact same spot, sipping on your favorite beverage, running your own professional organizing business, 
and it was booked out with amazing clients that get you excited to get out of bed in the morning. How would that make you feel? But let me guess, there is something holding you back, right? Like that voice of imposter syndrome that whispers, who am I to do this? Well, let me tell you, I have been there and it is not only possible to overcome those fears, it's essential because your future clients need somebody exactly like you. And remember that I am here to help you with proven tools and strategies to get you where you want to be in this industry if you're willing to follow my lead. My brand new mini course from Overlooked to Overbooked is designed to help you overcome your imposter syndrome, turn your website into a client magnet with SEO strategies that actually work, skyrocket your social media presence without that uncomfortable buy my stuff energy and confidently network like a pro all while building genuine connections that feel as natural as making friends. It's all self-paced and comes with a workbook full of done for you scripts and templates that are proven to generate leads, help you sound confident and convert all of that into cash in your wallet. And if you want to get paying clients in the door faster, you can also pick up my done for you pro organizer forms pack designed specifically for professional organizers with nine custom templates, including a client agreement, payment authorization form, follow-up email scripts, and so much more. You use a free Canva account to add your business info, branding touches, and then you're basically ready to go for your next project. And as a special gift for being an amazing part of my speaker fam, you're going to get $8 off both the overbooked course and my pro organizer forms pack using code YTPRO8 at checkout. All that info will be down in the description and the podcast show notes. Lastly, if you're kind of nervous about taking pay payments for jobs and you know you need to take cards from clients, then I've got a tool that is going to make your day. Project to Payment is my favorite invoicing and customer management tool that's actually easy to use. With just one tool, you get paid faster, create seamless professional customer experiences, and you get access to estimates, invoices, payments. They've got super fast payout for a healthy cash flow, QuickBooks integration, and to top it all off, you get the best and friendliest US-based customer support to walk you through any hiccup or questions. And there's so many more features that they have coming online every single month. You work hard to organize for your clients. So doesn't your business deserve the same? Obviously the answer is yes. And so project to payment is only $20 a month and they have the most competitive and transparent processing fees in the industry. And trust me, I have tried them all. And if that weren't enough, when you go to project to slash I speak organized, you're going to get three months completely free just to try it out. So you're welcome. That's it. No more reinventing the wheel. These resources are plug and play and allow you to access what works while avoiding the pitfalls as much as possible. Remember that investing in yourself is the first step to showing your clients that they should invest in you. So don't let another moment pass you by to become the business owner that your future clients need. You're only one decision away from becoming booked, busy, and well-equipped to crush it in the professional organizing industry. So let's yeah. kind of like, let's pivot again for our listeners who are aspiring to this industry to learn a little bit more about the behind the scenes. I'm just curious, this is a question that I ask a lot of my guests about technology and organization. If there's anything that you like to incorporate into your organizing process that helps maintain spaces for clients, or if there's something that even helps you with your business backend process, what's your favorite thing to use? as part of your business in, in terms of technology? So I guess I'm your standard millennial. I'm not super huge on technology as far as using it with my clients. I'm super straightforward. It's it's all about the process. Mm -hmm. But for my workspace, yeah, I, I heavily rely on technology because it's the systems and the automation that my brain can't do mm -hmm. that I really rely on within my technology. My biggest thing is I have my website on Wix mm -hmm. and I run everything through Wix. So having everything just on one singular system is so much better for me, for my mm -hmm. brain. My CRM is there. My invoices are there. Like everything is there. My products are there, like all the good things. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to bip on over to all the different places because my brain doesn't work that well like that. Right. So yeah. I didn't realize that you could do all of those different tasks through Wix. So many great things. Yes. Yeah. And they're super affordable and very easy to use as far yep. as website development is concerned. So that's a great tip. I'll make sure to do a little bit more research on that. Can have you back and do a whole episode just about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I want to ask your advice for aspiring organizers. If you had to come up with 
you know, one to three key pieces of advice for anybody who's looking to start or level up their business, what would that be? Again, be true to who you are. Like if you have the side shave, roll with it. You don't need to cover it up. I I thought that. I thought I would have to like cover it up for my higher end clients, maybe. Oh, yeah. I thought that it would really affect my client base. And it it, it hasn't at all. Mm. If anything, it's attracted cooler people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and and the, my biggest tip for anybody trying to get out there in any new business is just to get out there. Stop being behind the computer or having the idea just in your brain. Get it. You don't even have to have the business up and running yet. Go to a networking meeting. Usually the first meetings are free if it's a paid one or there's tons of free events and just get out there and you can say, I don't have a business, but I want to Mm -hmm. let me run some ideas by you guys. What do you think? Get out there, throw your ideas out there. The more people that hear you and see you, the better. Right. Amen. I love that. That's so true. I never really thought about it from the perspective of not even knowing what your business is, but still going to those meetings and showing up because people really do love to brainstorm. Any any entrepreneur loves to nerd out about business strategy. And I'm sure anybody would be willing to talk to you all day and night until you're blue in the face about it, right? 100%. Yeah. (laughs) And I've got the person for this and I've got the person for this and then I got the person for that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. It's one of my go-to strategies as well. And I know that there's, we were, because I'm a member of ASPO, the American Society of Professional Organizers. And we had this long conversation yesterday during our monthly meetup about introverts and how to like overcome that and still put yourself out there and, you know, be a part of the community. So what do you think about that? So clearly I'm an extrovert, Mm -hmm. but there is an organizer within my group and she does mainly like paper organizing and office organizing. She's very quiet. Mm -hmm. She's very soft spoken. And when she talks, she just says very slowly and with ease what she's all about. And the people that need her and are attracted to her are going to find her because I am not her. You know what I mean? Yes. We need, we need the introverts. We need those quiet people because I can promise you I am too much for a lot of people. (laughs) (laughs) Not for me, sister. I love you. I think that's great. We need, you need a Lisa to, to bring you to that meeting and say, look at how amazing this person is. You know, like we all need, I have an, uh, one of my very first clients is very much like you, same energy, ADHD. She works for a crypto company. She travels all over the world. She's doing all the things. Yeah. And, and I would never go out without my husband or my kids if it weren't for her. Cause she's like, girl, you need to get out. You need to get out there and do this. I'm like, okay. So she is dragging me along all the time. That is me for sure. Oh, I love it. Oh, that's the best. So yeah. that's great advice. Now, as far as your business, kind of turning it inward, just to kind of wrap up with our last two questions here, what are you excited about for the Productive Owl coming up in the next year? You got anything fun on the horizon? Anything you'd like to share with us? Yeah. I mean, I've got some cool speaking gigs coming up, which I'm super stoked about. I actually went to college for public speaking. So that's kind of cool using the degree for what I uh, should be. I really appreciate I like I appreciate those opportunities. So I'm trying to scale my business in two different ways, which is one more speaking gigs. And then the other way is my product. I just launched a product and it's officially launching early spring, Mm -hmm. but the digital copy is out right now. And it's a filing system for kids, school memories and keepsakes. So I help you to capture those memories. And then I help you to figure out what to put in those hanging file systems so that we're not, we're not keeping everything. P.S. I just threw away the box that a mom collected for one of my clients for all the memories of elementary school throughout her years. And like, I opened it up and I asked my client, like, Hey, do you want to go through this? Maybe grab a few things. She's like, toss it all. Wow. That's, I mean, people, when they're ready, they're ready, you know? They're ready, yeah. yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> I'll make sure that we have the link to that down in the yeah. description of the podcast show notes. So people can check it out. I'm sure that people are going to be very interested to see that in action, learn more about it's it. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love, I love that. So I wish I would have started sooner. Like I, I've got a seven and 11 year old and I wish uh-huh. I would have. So I'm, I'm hoping people will start when, you know, you've got a kindergarten. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I know I'm not the best at that. So I might need your help. Yeah. <laughs> I might yeah, need your yeah. help. I you. Yeah. All right. For our last question, it's our fun James Lipton style question. If you could have dinner with any fictional character, who would it be and why? 
Okay, so I don't watch a lot of like TV or movies or anything like that. So my first gut instinct reaction was like, Daria! (laughs) Because like, she was my total crush all growing up. So I was like, heck yeah. Yeah. I I don't know what we would talk about, but I would just be like, yeah. But your glasses the whole time. Right? Yeah. We're so cool, right? Yeah. But I would probably, I think Mary Poppins would be so legit because... So like her approach to organizing is not just about tidying it up, right? It's all about like creating joy and harmony and uh, like incorporating people in the lives around you. I just think we'd have a delightful conversation. Mm. Oh my gosh. I love that. I I love asking those questions because you just never know what people are going to come up with like Daria and Mary Poppins. Let's do it. I'm there. It is actually who I am. If you, if you, if you mold those together. Yes. Yes. Lisa is the Daria, Daria Poppins. Daria Poppins. (laughs) Sold. I love it. I have a line of fashion figures. (laughs) Oh my gosh, man. I'm going to cry again, but for happy tears time. That's super funny. I love it. Lisa, you've been an absolute pleasure. It's been fun. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me and letting me share about the productive owl. And yeah, I hope that all the organizers out there are encouraged to work with ADHD humans. I think we are amazing people and I absolutely love working with neurospicy people. Yes. Amen, sister. (laughs) we'll make sure that everybody can get in touch with you as they have questions that come up because i'm sure there will be some for sure absolutely thank you so much all right fam that's gonna wrap it up thank you so much for being here today it's an honor to have your time on the speak organized podcast i hope you got tons and tons of value out of today's episode if you want to connect with us lisa's information is going to be down in the description in the podcast show notes and my information is there as well that's one of my favorite things about this podcast is being able to connect directly directly with you. So the easiest way to do that is to go to ispeakorganized.com slash courses where you can learn about booking that one-on-one coaching call with me or taking the overlooked to overbooked course, which as of the moment of this filming is $25 off through the end of August, which is awesome because it's full of really valuable content that's going to help you skyrocket your business and really take it to the next level. So I would be super excited to have you in there. Check that out among all the other resources that we have available at ispeakorganized.com slash courses again. And if you haven't joined my free Facebook group, make sure to go down to the description to check that out and join there. And a huge shout out as always to our sponsors, Project Payment. They are awesome. Be sure to check them out at the description down below. And beyond that, I hope you guys have an awesome day and I will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.